Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Yael and this week has been a very busy week over on the War Within Beta with Blizzard trying to do a massive, massive overhaul to so many different roles and so many different playstyles to make sure that healers do not get left behind. But with all that, it means that tanks do need to take a bit of a step back in terms of some of their defensive options. And while some tanks like Protection Paladin have kind of crumbled under pressure, other tanks are still holding strong. And one of those tanks is the Guardian Druid. In particular, the class of druid has gotten buffs and nerfs as of this week in order to better facilitate this healer meta. In order to give healers more opportunities to be able to respond to tank damage and be able to spot heal their allies better where we see buffs to restoration. But also the changes to guardian druid does feel like it's a lot of little nerfs here and there and while some tanks would die death by a million paper cuts, guardian druids are still holding strong and are surprisingly quite durable so far when it comes to testing them over in the beta. For today's video I want to do a bit of a deeper dive with some of the druid changes that we've seen with this week's build specifically over for the war within and as always if you guys wanted to see more regular class updates like these over for the beta or potentially with pre-patch without approaching very soon go ahead and follow the channel otherwise let's dive right in so as per usual let's get through some of the more generalized changes which are going to be I guess generalized but they're a bit more specific though it does mean that the survivability of druids is actually getting a bit of a shake up so we have things such as your basic heal of regrowth that has been amped up by 30 percent at least its initial healing effect because it has an initial heal effect where it gets usually a very bursty kind of opener and then it has a trickle down healing over time effect afterwards that initial heal is getting amplified by 30 percent which is pretty big for restoration in particular however passive heals or more form heals like a bear form heal a friends and regen that has been nerfed this week from a 32 percent of your max health to instead 20 percent of your max health over three seconds which is um unfortunate this is a nerf when it comes to that combat healing that some druids need at moments and that is getting affected primarily to reduce some of the survivability of guardian druid with that being said to further down reduce guardian effectiveness a little bit more iron fur has been adjusted to increase your armor by 112 percent of your agility instead of 120 a very slight change but it does make guardian druids a little bit less uh tanky also the ability of renewal has been adjusted as well i mean they're hitting druids with all kinds of survivability nerves even uh, where feral druids bunk and anyone restoration are catching some of these where renewal healing is going to be heal you for 20 percent of max health instead of 30 percent but that 10 percent can really make quite a bit of a difference from there on we can move on to some of the other hero spec changes primarily for the keeper of the grove and wild stalker a huge portion of these will mostly affect restoration druids as they're trying to amplify healers it's no surprise that tanks got nerfed over the last few weeks and they're trying to reinforce healers a little so they have better overall healing and better spot healing but there's also a couple of different adjustments that we'll talk about restoration druids specifically that have seen a bunch of healing buffs week after week so far but we'll get into those changes in due time keeper of the grove and wild stalker both of these have been adjusted a little again primarily for a healer spec for Restoration Druid, the Dream Bloom ability, which is when your petals bloom, that healing has been amplified by 20% in order to make Keeper of the Grove a little bit better option for Resto Druids. From there on, we got a ton of other talent adjustments also, such as Power of Nature, which increases the healing of Reju of Aflo and Life Bloom while Grove Guardians are active by 10% instead of 5%, so doubling the talent's value. However, if you take Durability of Nature instead, then this talent allows you to apply a minor version of Scenario's Ward on an ally from your Grove, Guardians, Nourish, and Swiftman abilities. Now, the minor Scenario and Ward cast on your allies, that healing has also been increased by 100% this time around. With the talent of Grove, Inspiration, Regrowth, Wild Growth, and Swiftman healing has been increased by 9% up from 6%, while with the talent of Potent Enchantments, which causes your Tree of Life granted by Refor station to last three seconds instead of two seconds the main capstone of harmony of the grove has also been upgraded where harmony of the grove now increases your healing by six percent per active grove guardian instead of three percent which is quite a noticeable increase which overall is a pretty big buff for restoration druids all around specifically recently we've seen a lot of druids going wild stalker whenever they are druids in dungeons but keeper of the grove i think that what they're trying to do with this one is trying to make it a little bit more competitive as a burst or just as a healing option for restoration druids going forward to make sure that they are not just locked into always playing wild soccer at all times 
Though even Wild Circuit has gotten a couple adjustments, which are mostly healer specific in terms of output, but also some survivability adjustments as well. With the Wild Circuit, you have a more of a passive playstyle where Rip and Ray can apply a bloody thorn that bleeds enemies over time, while abilities such as Wild Growth, Regrowth, and Aflow healing has a chance to cause a symbiotic, symbiotic bloom to grow on a target, doing a bit of healing over time as well. The symbiotic blooms will more like than likely will prefer injured players over pets, which is a huge quality of life upgrade there, and the symbiotic blooms grow 30% more often, which is quite a nice overall performance value increase. As for this personal survivability of Wild Striker, we did see some reductions in that front, such as Bond with Nature, which increases healing taken by 3% instead of 10%, which is going to affect both Feral and Restoration in a similar way. But also we have Harmonious Constitutions, which now increases regrowth healing to yourself by 35% as Resto and by 25% as Feral, where this used to be a 50% value for both of them. What I think with this ch defensive change, what they're trying to do for the most part is to make Wild Striker a little bit more even for restoration between picking Wild Striker or Keeper defensively, but also for Feral Druid, Wild Striker and Druid of the Claw defensive options. Wild Striker kind of utilizing that self-healing and restoration druid in order to help fortify them defensively, while the Druid of the Claw utilizes the bear defenses with passive damage mitigation and even a possibility for you to have an enhanced bear form in order to become tankier during crucial moments. And for the most part, we've seen a lot of druids go in Wild Striker, so I think it's more a balancing thing in order to make them at least more even and more of a choice when it comes to defensive options. Though beyond that, we've seen a buffs for restoration specifically from here on out, with things such as bursting growth healing increase being amped by 100%. With the talent of implant, you cause your symbiotic blooms to grow for 6 seconds instead of 4 seconds, which gives you even more value towards the blooms that just continue to ramp up. And with the capstone of vigorous creepers, it increases the healing of spells to the targets afflicted by symbiotic blooms by 20% instead of 6%. Because of the way that the blooms or a bloodseeker vines work you can basically have two blooms grow on a singular player so just one layer of blooms increases your healing to the target by 20 percent but if you can get two of them to grow at the same time that's 40 percent so technically if you can get all three of them to grow if you can force these blooms to grow this could be a lot of potential for the pure single target focus healing which is kind of part of the fun of the wild stalker even though being able to control these, uh, either the vines or for bleeding or the blooms for healing, that can be a little bit difficult and it's kind of reliant on RNG. Either way though, that is a fantastic increase for Wildstalker from the restoration side of things, either with the Keeper of the Grove, which focuses on empowering you whenever you have those Grove Guardians working, plus all of your other abilities, or Wildstalker, which plays around with a bloom ability, amplifying them with bursting growth and creepers as much as possible in order to give you some more of that focus spot healing. From there on, we have to talk about Guardian Druids, and as of recently, Blizzard has nerfed every single tanking spec in the game over in the beta, as part of a feature where they want to make tanks less super self-sufficient, but also to encourage healers to be able to compete and be able to be uh, helpful and supportive and viable and playable and needed inside of group content such as Mythic Class Dungeons and Raids, where they said in some cases they have seen moments where healers get swapped out for AUG and you don't necessarily need a healer because you don't ever need to heal the tank and they really want to encourage for healers to be more viable but to promote use of healers they're nerfing tanks not the best way of going about it I don't think that's the best way to do it I don't think you should punish one role in order to make the other role more viable but that being said Every tank spec, however, did get nerfs from Guardian to Brewmaster to Blood Deacon, Protection Paladin, Prop Warrior, Avengers Demon Hunter, and Guardian Druid being one of my favorite tanks. I was actually very, very sad to see some of those nerfs. We took a look at those actually earlier with some of the changes such as Friends of Regen, Iron Fur, and even Renewal, but there's been a whole nother layer of nerfs on top of it. For the most part, these are small adjustments, but small adjustments very quickly can stack up, as you'll see here. 
With things such as reinvigoration, they've actually reduced the effectiveness of the cooldown reduction that it provides for a frenzied region, reducing your overall healing. And even talents such as Earth Ward and damage reduction were lowered to 25%, where previously it was 30%. Small changes, but they keep stacking up. Survival of the Fittest cooldown reduction for things such as Barkskin and Survival of the fi uh, Fittest has also been reduced down from 12 and 24% at two points from what was originally a 15 30% reduction at two points before. Smaller passive talents such as Tooth and Claw, wherever you get yourself a full maul or a raise at the target, you actually cause them to do less damage to you. That damage reduction has been lowered from a 15% down to 12%. With talents such as after the wildfire, whenever you spend rage, you end up erupting in a heal for everybody around you. I think mostly affecting five nearby allies, there is a bit of a cap to make sure this doesn't do some insane raid he AoE healing. After the wildfire has been adjusted, however, though it doesn't reflect in game, though in a blue post, it says it will trigger after spending 300 rage instead of 200 rage, which means that heal is going to have even more delays going forward. For those of you that enjoyed that Ark and Bear playstyle, those talents such as Alun's Favorite have been reduced in terms of the healing elements, where Alun's Favorite will heal you for 25% of Arcane damage instead of 40%, which is a sizable adjustment. The cooldown of Rage of the Sleeper, which is a fantastic option with the meta cooldown, has also been reduced, with its duration cut down from 8 seconds down from originally 10 seconds, Rage of the Sleeper damage reduction at 20% instead of 25%, and even Leech reduced down to 20% instead of 25%. More news challenges such as Pulverize have had the duration reduced from 10 seconds down to 8 seconds for that extra DR that it provides you. And finally, Ursak's Guardian, the incarnation ability, Guardian of Ursak, and the uh, Ursak's Guidance talent, that specifically has been adjusted where the cooldown reduction of your incarn is now reduced by 1 second for every 25 rage spend instead of 20 rage spent. So I feel like all the, uh, on their own, all of these nerfs are not that big. Or oh, like a little bit of cooldown reduction here, a little bit of cooldown adjustment here, a little bit of damage reduction here and there. None of those things on their own are all that terrible. Oh, I guess, yeah, also Ursak's Fury, that healing has also been reduced down to 25% as well. Though in all in all, with all these changes, I do feel like Guardian Druids are taking a beating where it's not really a death by a bunch of nerfs, it's a death by a thousand cuts. So all of these little nerfs here and there definitely do soften them up a little. Where previously as a Guardian Druid, I felt like you could run in, get yourself a bunch of rage, couple of layers of iron fur, and then you got a, all this armor, you got a little bit of self-healing, a little bit of shielding, you may be rotating bar skin together into a potentially a um rage of the sleeper and there's moments where you can just completely nullify all damage taken and those feel really really good you no longer really nullify damage just through your defenses as much anymore even stacking up a bunch of stacks of iron for him it does provide you with physical damage reduction, but it's not enough to just completely make you a sponge that could take damage without your health bar moving an inch. Now your health bar constantly is moving back a bit, so it's a little bit more, you are having to fight for survivability a little bit harder than you did before. That being said, Guardian Druid still does have an A separate sleeve, where other tanks it feels like their cooldowns are just getting softer and softer. Guardian still has one cooldown that actually does kind of make you feel like a god mode as a tank. And this is something that feels amazing on every single tank class, and that is Incarnation. Out of all the different cooldowns they've nerfed from all the different defensives, but also all the different passive mitigation options, Incarnation still is a very powerful cooldown. Provides you a ton of healing, ton of rage, ton of resources, so you can really bolster your defenses, but also provide quite a bit of offensive damage as well. It's just a cooldown that does everything and anything at the same time. And that feels amazing, honestly. Compared to like testing out uh, Brewmaster Monk, testing out Blood DK, there are moments where you can feel definitely secure or definitely fortified. But I don't think I've ever really had moments where damage completely stops, unless you're like a Blood Death Knight with that rune weapon that grants you parry and you're just getting lucky parry procs. For Guardian, however, pressing Incarnation, it does feel like at some point, if you are managing resources, essentially the damage you are taking almost completely stops, and you can just kind of hold it in place, and that is pretty awesome. I'm a huge fan of that kind of playstyle, and that reliability, I think, is what I enjoy the most right now about Guardian, so it definitely doesn't feel great 
then one of my favorite tanky classes that I've enjoyed for multiple expansions now has gotten nerfed and it feels weaker than before. But it, it, at the end of the day, compared to some of the other ones, it does still feel kind of strong. A lot more players have been given this one a go when it comes to keys, at least on the beta. And the keys are very, very overtuned right now for Mythic Plus content. But there's players that are pushing tens, tens and above that are trying to see just how much uh, beating a Guardian Druid can take. And right now, they're not in a bad spot either. Them and Protection Warriors in particular, I think, made it out pretty well with some of the shaders because they've always been like a team player type of a tank. There are moments where a Guardian or a Protection Warrior will be able to reduce the damage they take greatly. And maybe there'll be moments where they can kind of sort of heal themselves for a bit. But there will be moments where they need some support from a healer and will need some healing but they're great at reducing the damage taking, so at least the healer does not have to panic of health, uh, tank's health immediately disappearing within 0.2 seconds. Instead, you are going to see a gradual reduction, but a very slow gradual reduction. And that's the good part about Guardian and Protection Warrior in particular, is because essentially, those are the two takes that always have been a team sp team player when it comes to survivability it's a bit of a dance between them and a healer and it continues to be a dance between those two so that's has been the least jarring change out of those two unlike blood dk which has mostly been or entirely a solo kind of game mode right literally with single player gameplay is survivability and taken and now you have to find a way to incorporate a healer into that play style and definitely has been feeling a bit jarring but definitely has not been feeling jarring for guardian which is always good to see now, as part of this rework for tanks and healers, Restoration Druid also needs to see more buffs in order to better support your tank friends in keys and raids. However, Restoration Druid has been getting a ton of buffs over the last few weeks now, and it seems kind of crazy just with the amount of changes they've gotten. For instance, abilities such as your Swiftman, for example, that ability has got buffed for restoration in particular by 20%, though a week before that, Swiftman overall healing has been buffed by 15% globally for all the Druid specs as well. So Swiftman has now gotten a couple of solid, massive, pretty ginormous buffs in fact, and it's kind of crazy just with how many buffs Resto has gotten, besides all the changes we talked about earlier and the hero talent changes which are their own thing. We also have things such as life bloom healing has been buffed both the healing over time increased by 20 percent but also the bloom heal increased by 30 percent so if you're playing around with talents that really amplify certain healing over time elements or even the bloom elements there's definitely some big value to be gained with things such as budding leaves and hoping for that big bloom scenario ward has also been adjusted as well as part of a way to increase the overall support and tank healing send word is often applied on a tank to make sure they can survive so when you apply a big send word now now this healing has been amped by 20%. Besides this, regrowth healing for Restoration Druids on its own has also been increased as of a couple of builds ago by 15%. Wild growth healing increased by 15% and even rejuvenation healing has been increased by 15% as well. So Restoration Druids in particular are having a lot of the healing aspects being increased by quite a bit over the last few weeks. Now, for the most part, it will likely make sense to, uh, as to why they're doing this, and that's mostly because of the way that they're restructuring Resto. As for this expansion specifically, they're trying to kind of wean them off to be less reliant on cooldowns, but this means their basic healing abilities do need to be amplified by quite a bit. But for Restoration Druid, for the most part, in terms of the way it feels and after all these changes, doesn't really feel that different to play. It doesn't feel that much different compared to Live Resto, except I feel like Live Resto is a little bit more setup heavy with its healing over time being a huge bulk of how you deal with the damage going out, while this version of Restoration seems a little bit more spot healing and more instant healing, heavily encouraged to use the ability of regrowth quite regularly. From your tier set, which supports the ability of regrowth quite literally, you have your Keeper of the Grove, which also supports the ability of regrowth quite aggressively, but also Wild Strucker, which has the blooms that you can proc, proc from Wild Growth, Regrowth, and Afflorescence. So Regrowth seems to be a more core ability that ends up showing up quite a bit for Restoration Druids all across the board. Plus, also comparing some of the different logs of players running keys right now as Resto, from some of the mid-tier to some of the high-tier, Regrowth ends up being a button they end up pressing quite a bit, and it actually ends up being a a huge portion of your overall output, at least when it comes to Mythic Plus Dungeons, which I'm not necessarily used to, but it does give you an opportunity to at least set up a big regrowth and then pop somebody up basically from 20% health up to max, which plays very similarly to that of like a paladin with a bit of that focus healing or mystery or monk. So I think to some degree, we've potentially seen 
a little bit of a homogenization for healers because it looks like every single healer is given opportunity for spot healing in dungeons i guess to make sure they're all a little bit more evened out when it comes to five man content or better yet to be able to better support tanks who are now going to start taking additional damage that being said that is all said in a vacuum however i guess the question would be how good is rest of them in comparison and beta numbers are still an ever evolving thing but i guess if you were to compare them because comparing rest of the druids against other rest of the druids that's very difficult to gauge but if you were to compare them against like the most popular healing spec right now in the beta being currently restoration shaman rest of druid is not quite as good as rest of shaman but it may come down to the tuning they are doing quite a big change for resto making them less cooldown heavy but that means the basic combat abilities will have to be a lot stronger you see in the past like in the current live version of rest of druid that is very very cd heavy changes to stuff like wild growth and rejuvenation amping up by 15 percent as well as life bloom by 20 and 30 percent for the bloom i would have said there's some insanely good changes but resto has gone through quite an adjustment where they're trying to wean them to be less reliant off of big cooldowns but they want to support the base healing a little bit more and this is where i start seeing things like 20 percent buffs 30 percent buffs 15 percent buffs are actually quite big adjustments those are quite big nerves and it then makes me wonder not from a perspective of like oh it looks like resto is getting pretty overpowered to oh it looks like resto has been behind by quite a bit and they need these big enough increases in order to be closer to all of the other healers so this gets me a little worried though though so as for restoration we do see him here and there when it comes to mythic plus and when it comes to some of the hierarchies like tens and aboves but like i said restoration shaman right now has been the more played healer and one of the more popular picks so far over on the beta so i'm wondering if restoration Druid will see additional adjustments though it looks like at least they are trying to focus on giving them more healing giving them more spot healing giving them more support healing which hopefully will result in this healer playing great because otherwise i'll love the everything else about druid the, the hybrid capabilities of it whether you want to go caster how restoration druid for dungeons or feral restoration druid heavily supported by wild stalker all of the different choices such as your fluid form to be able to shift forms left and right how they're empowering bear form as a proper defensive so you can now use bear form as more of like Okay, this is actually a really solid defensive. You're getting targeted, pop some hots, bear form. You can take up the damage, take quite a bit of overall output. And I, I, I'm a big fan of the things they've done, but primarily for my druid general changes, not specifically for what they've done for Resto in particular. But I think this opens up opportunity for Resto to utilize some of those hybrid changes and some hybrid abilities, such as called the Elder Druid and Druid Scenarios, which I tried out before, didn't think those were as effective but i may need to give it another shot because they have been buffing some of the uh, offensive output as of recently so maybe there's an opportunity for me to find the right build i think it's all about finding the right build and giving this thing another proper go though with that being said it does look like druids even though we've seen guardian druids among other things getting nerfs they are getting away with just a scratch or two definitely not as durable as they were but not feeling as jarring as that of a blood death knight which i think is a good thing with restoration druids continuously getting buffs after buffs and after all of the different buffs we've seen for boomkin and some of the changes we've seen for feral druids it does look like we've seen mostly buffs for the class of druid week after week over on the beta so i guess i want to pass off the question to you guys in the comments down below what are your thoughts on all the different druid changes we've seen so far how do you think bear is going to hold out with all of these different nerfs and from what is being said are you maybe even excited about potentially investing into a bear druid specifically as a tank going forward or do you think bear has any viability when it comes to let's say the end game meta game of tanks now that you know all the tanks have been adjusted blood dk is no longer this godly healer that's just so sustainable i think this opens up an opportunity for bear to potentially do well what are your thoughts on restoration druids and do you think it's going to be enough all these different adjustments to make them as popular and as played as a uh, rest of shamans right now on the beta but also what other changes would you want to see for the class of druid what do you think is missing right now and what changes would you want to see for this class to make you even want to consider them as a potential main going forward let me know all of the thoughts in the comments down below but as always i want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this video and hope all of you enjoyed if you did enjoy it or found it informative go ahead and give it a like i would very very much appreciate that and if you guys want to join our community or reach out to me directly we have a channel discord found in the description of every single one of these videos we'd love to see you guys join our community and as always let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and i'll see all of you guys in the next one